Our next example is what we call motion generation synthesis. We'll be creating a four bar linkage, but in this case the rocker will need to move between two positions, two positions. However, the endpoints do not represent the pivot. We'll see this in a moment. As before, there'll be equal time rocking forward and back, and in the end we'll need to specify all the link lengths. So here we are in SolidWorks. We see that we have two lines already created and already positioned. They are both equal to one another, and the positions are locked. We can see that each endpoint has an anchor or a fixed relation. We need to determine the pivot of this rocker, the pivot location. The pivot location will not be in line, most likely, with the two positions that we see here. So our rocker needs to move between these two positions, but this is not the pivot and this is not the pivot, nor is it the intersection of these two. The pivot is located at the intersection of the perpendicular bisector of these two points and of these two points. Let me demonstrate. First, I'm going to go under construction, create a line. I'm going to go from one endpoint to the other endpoint. And just to make clear is that we would consider this to be point E1 and point E2, and this to be point F1 and F2, so that the rocker goes from one position and moves to another position. And so it's these two points are connected or connected by a path and these two points are connected by a path. Now that we've got a line between those two points, let's go ahead and make a perpendicular bisector of that line. And as I hover around, you can see that it snaps to the midpoint. And I'm going to just draw a line. It's not perpendicular, so I'm going to select the two lines and make them perpendicular. I'm going to do the same to the other two points that I called F1, F2. So a line from one endpoint to the other endpoint, and then a line from the pivot, or I'm sorry, from the midpoint. And it looks like it will snap as a perpendicular line. And so I will, well, I'm just gonna make sure that it is. I'm gonna go off so it's not perpendicular, and now make it perpendicular. The intersection of these two bisectors is our pivot of our rocker. So I'm going to go ahead and make a point. In fact, I'm going to make this to be a link point. I'm going to snap it to the intersection. I try to. It doesn't let me snap it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it there, and then I should be able to move it so that is now the intersection or coincident to both lines. Now I'm going to continue on with my link. I'm going to go from the endpoint of one line to our pivot and the endpoint of our other line to our pivot. And I didn't quite hit that right. One line to our pivot. There we go. So now we can see the toggle positions of our rocker. I'm going to make the new rocker under new links. I'm going to start a line at the pivot. And I'm going to make this line equal to that line. Call that our sweeper, I suppose, or this line equal to that line. And if I were to try to move it, we see that we still don't have our angle fixed. So I'm going to go under our dimension, determine the angle between these two lines, 144.3. We're going to keep it to be driven. And we don't want that to be new links. We want that to be dims. I'm not sure why it doesn't always lock in. And then we want the angle between these two lines to be the same as what we see here. So we'll go under hidden dimensions. The reason I'm choosing hidden is because it will be the same dimension as we see here. It'll just add to clutter. So I'll go to smart dimension, 144.3. There's no easy way to make an equal relation between these two, and so we'll just do it this way. That'll be close enough. Now I'll escape out of all my tools and just try our rocker. Now I'm going to go ahead and hide a lot of the stuff that we have already. I'm going to hide the hidden dimensions hide the dimensions, and even hide the construction lines. And I'm actually going to hide the new link as well. And let's get rid of these relations. Here we go. Now at this point, this is very similar to what we did earlier when we made a inline crank rocker between a known angle. And although we don't know the angle, we can easily dimension it. But the actual angle isn't important. 
But what we're going to do different from the previous video is that we are going to make an arbitrary point on our rocker link to where our coupler will be connected to. So to do that, I'm going to go into construction. I think I've hidden that layer, so I'm going to have to unhide it and go to circle, zoom in here, and some location, make a circle. Now the intersection of the circle and the rocker is where our coupler will join or be pinned. I'm going to make my circle a little bit bigger, and now I'll make my line here. There we go. Let's see if I can get an intersection snap. It doesn't seem like it wants to give me an intersection snap, so I'm just going to make a line going from one location to another location. Now I'm going to drag that point down to make it coincident with the circle. There we go. Took a bit. Now the rocker length won't be the entire length of this black line. Rocker length will be the length from this point to the pivot because our coupler will be in line here. And since it's even timing, forward and back, our pivot of our crank will be coincident to this line right here. So I'm going to go ahead and make another construction line. I'm going to start at this point right here. And I'm not going to make it looking like it's online. I'm going to select the two and then make them collinear. Now this is a little bit different than what we did in the previous video. In the previous video, we made our coupler construction line, so to speak, from this position to the end of the crank. But in this video, we'll go from this limiting position to the end here. And that will be our coupler line. So our crank will be on this coupler line. We're going to go to the end of the coupler. And this should be the same size as this distance here. Now I can make a measurement, or instead I'm just going to make a similar circle, and then make the two circles equal to one another. Let's make sure I've got the movement I want, and I do. Now at this point, we don't have any fixed dimensions yet, and that's okay. We're going to keep it free for a bit, just to see how it might look. We're going to go to New Links, make a line from the center of our circle here, all the way to the edge. That will be our crank. It's hidden, I think. Let's go ahead and unhide that. This should be a construction line. Let's go make that back to a construction line. There we go. And then we'll make a coupler going from this point here to the intersection. I don't know if I'll be able to get it or not. I've been having problems with the intersection. So I'm going to put it on the rocker. And now that the endpoint's on the rocker, I'm going to snap it too, I hope. Make those coincident. There we go. And I'm going to make this line and this line to be equal. And I'm just going to go ahead and fix this point right here, I think that will give us some viewing as to how our mechanism will run. Now I can't change anything else, but if I were to unfix this point, let's get rid of the fix relation, I can change the size of my rocker, and I can also change the size of my coupler. So I'm going to dimension the circle. And if I have it looking like this, I think I can, let's make it 30. And let's show this as a radius. So that radius represents the rocker length. So the rocker length is 15. Let's go ahead and dimension the coupler. It's at 50 right now, or 50.6. Let's make it even 50. And let's go ahead and see what our crank is. Now notice as I move it around, this is not the true length of the crank, as well as this is not the true length of the crank. This is the true length of the crank, but if I want to lock it, I can right click and now it remains as the true length and I can position it. If I don't like that, I can right click again and notice I can change it to the alternate versions. So right click will lock it and it'll stay as this true length. And it's going to give me an error. I'm going to keep it driven. Remember we wanted our coupler to be at least three times our crank. If we multiply 8 by 3, it's 32. So we can even make this a little shorter if we wanted to. So we can make it to be 40. And that works out like that. And then finally, our ground link goes from one pivot to another pivot. And that's something that we can't change either. So it's 41.9 or about 42.
Let's go ahead and hide everything except our positions. So we'll keep links, get rid of construction, do that. Let's also get rid of these relations. And now we can see that our crank rocker moves in the positions that we had intended. As mentioned, our coupler rocker pin can be anywhere along this line, but even can be on the opposite side of our pin, our pivot. I won't do the whole thing, but I'm going to go to our link. Let's extend our link here and our link here. I'll make them collinear. And then I'll also do the same thing for our new link. I'll come to the circle and now make it collinear with our existing new link. We can see that it still pivots there. And then now we just need to complete the operation that we've done at least twice where we are designing a crank and coupler with a known sweep angle. And here on my other sheet, we can see that I've done just that. Except I didn't lock that, so let's go ahead and lock it. There we go. And you may notice that I even chose to have the coupler cross our ground line. That's not necessary, but that's how we did this one. Thank you.